Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how you doing? It's Big Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing. Now, we've had some, uh, we've had some news today on, uh, on the internet and in the newspapers, basically, Robert McCracken has, uh, it's coming for some stick for not for not stopping the Joshua fight now I think is it James Gray at the Sun newspapers put an article out and it's got a lot of hits uh, whether it's uh, a positive thing or not I think it needs looking at uh, I'm very surprised that a Sun newspaper which is a Murdoch which is a Rupert Murdoch newspaper. I'm very surprised that it's been done for the simple reason that uh, Rupert Murdoch, well, he owns Sky, doesn't he? So for, so for Rupert Murdoch, so, so for Rupert Murdoch to put, to have one of his employees put that story out, I think it's having a slight dig. Uh, uh, team Joshua trying to cause rifts in the camp uh, I could be wrong I could be talking out of turn but I don't think I am I'd like to think that I like to think that I know what I'm on with with this kind of thing and reading between lines I suppose you could say yes it needs uh, it needs mentioning the story needs mentioning but uh, you know it is what it is, isn't it? It's uh, it's just boxing talk, isn't it? Robert McCracken won't be bothered in the slightest with it now. So let's look. Let's look at the situation here. Right. right. So Robert McCracken, his nickname's Big Earn, has admitted he knew Anthony Joshua had a concussion after Andy Ruiz first dropped him so we all agree with that don't we now we all said that something wasn't right now personally i just think that joshua got caught at the top of his head and he couldn't recover i think that we've been fighting in america i think he was probably a little bit nervous because he's had it all his own way and he in england you know he's, he's had everybody patting him on back for the last seven years telling him is this is that is blah de blah in pros and you know he's only picked gloves up 10 years ago but he took to it like a duck to water didn't he for a simple reason he's an athlete and he? he could have probably done any sport he wanted to but you know should Rob have pulled him out now what would the repercussions be for him being pulled out for example A what would Joshua have done if he'd have been pulled out would he have felt that would he have felt let down by his training team? I mean, Joshua talks about being a warrior and this and that, and you start getting pulled out of fights by your trainer, you're not, you're not going to be happy one bit, are you? What would Carl Froch have said if, if he'd have got pulled out in the Groves fight after round one? He'd have had to live with that for the rest of his life, wouldn't he? So, I don't know, but... You know, the, the Joshua wouldn't have been happy. Then you've got Team Joshua, haven't you? You've got Matchroom. You've got, you know, Freddie Cunningham. You've got McCracken's team, haven't you? Mark Seltzer, Tony Sims. You've got 14 blue chip companies. They're all tied to Joshua, which sets a dangerous precedent because Joshua's probably got it in his contracts. So if he gets beat, there's a lot of things gonna gonna, gonna change financial-wise because... Joshua isn't going to have the invincible tag, is he? You see where I'm coming from? Same thing happened to Oscar De La Hoya when he first got beat. A lot of people, a lot of contracts changed and a lot, a lot, of, uh, a lot of people viewed him differently, he once, he once said, because he got beat. The invincibility were gone. Now, on, on the other side of the coin, the flip side of the coin, uh, 
you know a lot of people will come out with things like setbacks pave the way for comebacks and even Ali got beat now and this is how I look at it right there's a lot of people eating off the Anthony Joshua gravy train a lot of people have got gravy boats at the table a lot of them and they've all been they've all been stolen from hotel hotels they've, uh, they've stayed in along with towels and dressing gowns just like what Porky Tex but uh, I don't know uh, I don't know what to make of it all you know which, which brings me to the point of Robert McCracken himself he's a very very wealthy man now in his own right he's been at Team GB now for 10 years he's been the head honcho there 10 years with all the perks with all the perks that come with that job you know car nice car and tra free travel and free food and free tracksuits and basically just a free ride now you know he'll have had good money while he's been there 10 years I don't know what his salary is but you'd have thought it'd be f six figures wouldn't you a year if it's minimum six figures over 10 years that's a million pound isn't it plus all the perks and I know for a fact that when you were Team, team GB everything's paid for because it's sponsored by the lottery so everything's paid for food accommodation cars petrol car insurance uh, the whole lot is paid for everything tracksuits travel you name it so basically unless you're a pisshead your wages just stays in the bank doesn't it and that's true now Robert's been there 10 years now when he took that job on he'd been training Carl Frotch for seven years you know and Carl Frotch was already a world champion when he got that job so Robert would have, already, would have already had a few quid when he when he took that job. Plus, before he got with Carl Frotch, you know, Robert were a British champion. He fought for a world title. So the man is not poor. He's been with Joshua now as a pro seven years, as a pro six years. So Robert McCracken, he could walk away from boxing now and live a jet set lifestyle. Him and his family for the rest of the life. So I don't agree with a lot of stick he's had. <laughs> But I, uh, I would like to see Joshua change his style a little bit. I would have liked to have seen Carl Froch had a few different things to his style. But sometimes it's in your DNA to fight like that. It's in your DNA. I don't think you're ever going to take that away from Joshua that he's going to he's going to want to try and finish it off if he thinks he's get if he's got you hurt. Now if he gets Louisa in this rematch, is he going to bottle it going for the finish? I don't know, but. Like I've just said there, you know, Joshua's a superstar and Robert's been there with him a few years and he's not called Big Earn for note, as in McCrack Earn, Big Earn. Carl Frotch gave him that name actually. But uh, but Robert's a fair bloke and uh, niceties aside, should he have pulled Joshua out? That's for you, the fans, to decide. I'm not going to give an opinion on that. Because whatever I say these days just gets shot down. So uh, you've got to look at it like this. He didn't pull Carl Froch out against Groves and he rallied late on, didn't he? And won. Now a lot of people didn't like that stoppage. But what you what people are forgetting is that George Groves had a concussion. Now when he got to hospital he said he had a concussion and people at the boxing board of control were telling Howard Foster that he saved George for Groves' life. Now Eddie Earn buried it, didn't he? They didn't want to tell anybody that Groves had a concussion because they wanted to go with the narrative that George Groves were robbed when in reality Howard Foster saved his life, didn't he, if he had a concussion? Because could you imagine another three rounds in state Groves are in? Round rest of round nine to go, and then you got 10, 11, 12. If it had gone to points, what would Groves have looked like? Hey, imagine if Cro if if Groves had been in a day state and Frotch couldn't get him out there. And he just kept do doing that prank Bruno thing where you just plod forward and you're dazed. You know, uh, I don't know. Uh, I spoke to a friend of mine today, or te he texted me going on about 
CTE? Is it something to do with uh, brain injuries, some brain trauma, brain injuries or something? I think I've got it on my phone, which is in other office at the moment, but on charge. But I don't know, but should he have pulled him out? I don't know, man. It's 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 one of them, and it's up to trainer. And if they thought they could win the fight, you know, they'd already got him down once. I mean, I don't know. You back Joshua in a tear up against Ruiz, wouldn't you? But Ruiz's bodies, are, if you take the bodies, take the bodies out of it. Don't look at the physiques. Look at the skill level. Who's got the best skill level, Ruiz? Who's got the most power? I don't know. You'd have to say Ruiz, wouldn't you? I don't know. Joshua looks like he's got the most power, but I don't know. It's it's one of them, minute. Butterbean could punch like really hard, and he didn't have a great physique, did he? But he he, he was start, He got he, he actually fought Larry Holmes, didn't he? Butterbean. I mean, jeez. So don't look at the physiques. Look at the, some of the guys Butterbean put to sleep, and that's just how it goes. But I don't know. Did he need to pull him out? I don't know, were there a lot of pressure involved? Maybe, maybe Robert McCracken, maybe he felt if he'd have pulled him out, everybody could have turned against him. I know, that, and then you're going to miss out on more paydays. There's that going through a, fight, a trainer's mind. Any trainer who, who's been banking the checks that Robert McCracken's been banking, I mean, we're talking about here the second biggest star in world boxing. Nobody except Canelo banks bigger checks than Joshua so Robert McCracken he's banking some sizable money and has banked sizable money for years because he had frotch as well didn't he you know so it, you know do, do you do you want that to come to an end do you, do you want to be known as the trainer who stopped the unified heavyweight champion of the world in a fight where the champion after was screaming that it could have gone on I don't know Robert McCracken is the only one that will know but he's come out and he said that well in the Sun newspaper unless he's been misquoted he's saying that he's saying that Anthony Joshua was concussed now if he's concussed well I don't know but as regards the rematch they're putting the rematch on in Saudi as Joshua has mentioned uh, is it a cash out? You know, they're saying, uh, Eddie Earns saying that, or Anthony Joshua is saying he's not enjoying it as much. Eddie Earns has said that he's, Joshua had said he was disillusioned with the sport. And uh, as mentioned, the word pressure of late, and also he was fed up of grinding and uh, he doesn't want any more fights like the Vladimir fight or the Ruiz fight so maybe he's going to change his style who knows but it's a bit late to change his, his style at this day, day and age isn't it? he'll be 31 sorry about that the camera cut off uh, the battery it's a bit late for Joshua to change his style in it uh, you know he's mentioned the words pressure and you know he's a it's it's hard grinding every day you know it's a fight it's a fight and i'm grinding and well now he's been saying you know he doesn't like the pressure and he's disillusioned with the sport and i'm not enjoying it and i'm so grinding and it's a fight yeah it's in a fight you're gonna be 30 anthony when you get back in the ring and 30 year old it's a bit late to be changing your style, isn't it? I think. I think it's just a little bit late to be changing it. Leopards don't change the spots, you know. You're always going to have the devil in you, and you're always going to want to want to have a tear up. He is, as Terry Chapadama said, a typical Robert McCracken fighter, like Carl Frott. All guns blazing, extremely fit, gym rats. They put the effort in, hard trainers, and. I think Joshua, what he's got, he, he's putting the work in, but I don't think he knows how to pace himself. I mean, he's obviously doing the same, well, I'm assuming he's doing the same sessions as what Frotch did up at the uh, up at the GB team. I'm sorry for reverting back to Carl Frotch's training regime. It's just that I know it off by heart. I know what he did and how he did it. And if Robert McCracken has got Joshua doing the same routine as Carl Frotch, why is he gassing all the time? Carl Frotch didn't gas, is it because he carries a lot of muscle tissue on his body? 
I don't know, but Carl Froch, I'd like to think, was a 15 round fighter. He never got tired once in a fight. Uh, he never got tired once in a fight, so I don't know. I don't know. I don't think Joshua's a 15 round fighter. I think he's a 6 round fighter, and after that, he has to wait for his second wind. I don't think that's good. I think, I think it's only experience that's stopping Anthony Joshua. Uh, being able to pace himself, but I don't know, is, is Anthony Joshua weak? Is he weak mentally? I, I say no because he's done a lot, hasn't he? Don't forget, we're talking about a kid here that we're in trouble with police and uh, and all sorts of things, so I don't, I don't think he's weak at all, no. I don't, I don't think he is weak, no, at all, no. Uh, the experts say he is mentally weak. Uh, the experts also say that he was gifted an Olympic gold medal. And uh, he was gifted Charlie Martin's IBF belt. And then he was gifted some vacant belts against Vladimir, who was in his 42nd year and 69th fight. They threw the, uh, a couple of other belts in that night as well, didn't they? The WBA and the IBO, they threw them into the melting pot to go with the IBF, all they needed then were the WBO of Parker, which he later got, didn't he? Obviously Wilder's got the other belt, but basically four of them belts there are Tyson Fuse, aren't they, that he never lost it ring, so... I suppose you'd have to feel sorry for Tyson Fury how all that happened, wouldn't you? But a lot of it were self-inflicted, so... You know, er... Uh, have we been fooled and conned by this old charade? You know, regarding Joshua's CV? I don't know. Uh, he can only fight what's in front of him, can't he? It's not up to him how you manoeuvred outside the ring. It's like, uh, I've just had a one hour, 20 minute phone call with Dennis today, just now regarding Cash Alley and, you know, the press release that's gone out on uh, boxing scene regarding us signing Cash Alley which is a bit late because I think I did a video didn't I a couple of weeks ago about it <laughs> so boxing scene are not exactly uh, Mr Current events are they of late but maybe they should show it into Porky's Corner like you guys do but I've just had a one hour twenty minute chat with Dennis and you know some of Dennis's ideas for Cash Alley are uh, what's the word? I'd say good and some of them, I don't know, I think we might need a team meeting, but I'll leave that up to him. You know, we could, all we can do is put input in, put some input in regarding uh, cash, but uh, you know, it's, uh, it's not Cash Alley's job to be manoeuvred outside the ring, that's Dennis's job, isn't it, to get him manoeuvred. But uh, the main thing is that uh, the main thing is that the fighter does his job with his trainer and the promoter manager. They do their jobs outside the ring, and nobody can question what Eddie Hearn has done for Anthony Joshua. And I think Eddie Hearn, in all this, I know Joshua's dad had a go at him, didn't he? But you'd have to say Eddie Hearn, in all this. He's been a victim of his own success, hasn't he, really? Because at the end of the day, Eddie Hearn's job is to generate money for Joshua, but there's a, there's a slight feeling in the boxing industry that Joshua has been overworked. I mean, they did a lot of them evenings with Anthony Joshua. You know, they've done a few in this area, charging 20, 25 grand a pop. You know, he's tied to 14 blue chip companies and I mean, he even employs somebody to tell him when he leaves the house, you know, what, what to put round his neck or what to wear and get your Beats headphones on and drive this car today and wear this watch and put them trainers on that and that, and that tracksuit and put them boxers on and socks and whatever, head to toe, you know, the guy's, you know, he, he looks the part and he says all the right things, does all the right things, but... I think at the moment he is like a pressure cooker waiting to explode. In the ring after the fight, what did he say? He said, you know what, it's a relief. And do you know what? It's the first time I've actually felt sorry for him. 
the first time I've actually felt sorry for him because he's carrying a lot of pressure. He'll have a lot of people pulling at him this way and that way and he'll, he'll be thinking to himself, oh my god, I mean, they've milked it, haven't they, with him? He has been milked. He is the most manufactured fighter I have ever seen in my life. Some of the stuff they have done with him is shocking, isn't it? And he has been allowed to get away with murder, for example. We all remember that photo shoot he did where he put the same clothes on as what Muhammad Ali wore in in, in some in some pictures and Adam Smith were going on about him being like Ali and this and that and Ali beat 16 world champions and we were talking men plus other guys that he beat who would be world champions today and probably pound for pound some of the guys Ali beat that were never world champions like Ernie Shavers and people like that would just rinse everybody today so you know you could go back to Ali's career and say that you know he probably fought about 28, 27 or 28 world class fighters that would all win world titles today but in them days they, were only one, they only had one champion didn't they and 16 of them were world champions but how many of them fighters that he fought have been winning world champions today? I reckon about 28. Who knows, maybe even 30. George Chivalo. I mean, would George Chivalo be a world champion today? You bet he would. Do you know what I mean? You bet he would. Uh, so, but, but like I said. Uh, so, look at who Joshua's best. I mean, when you look at Joshua's career, who was his best winners in, every, in an heavyweight title fight? Who is his best win? Who? Vladimir Klitschko, that's who. 18 month on Seti after a schooling by Tyson Fury. Do you know what I mean? And that's, that's just how I look at it. And yeah, Tyson Fury beat Vladimir and you know he knocked the fight back a few times leading up to when he finally got it, got it. But so what? Tyson fought him when he thought he were ready. You know, why should Tyson have fought him when he were 23? When he fought him when he were 27? You know, Vladimir were that bit older and Tyson were that bit more advanced. So Tyson waited it out, didn't he? And it's all worked out for him, but... He timed it perfect, but... I don't know, so... So where does Joshua go from here now? If he, if he beats Ruiz, where does he go? Does he fight Wilder? No, I don't think he will. Does he fight Fury? No, I don't think he will. I, I think them three are going to dodge each other from now on. Uh, what does he do? Well, I personally think that they go back to what they had planned. They're just going to go back to being what they were being before. Just con it public. They'll go back to the mandatories. They'll go back to pumping guys up as it's a tough fight and I've got a squeaky bum. They'll go back to them sort of fights, I, I, I believe. And they'll hope that Dylan White beats his B sample thing. But uh, that's what I think. But will there be a trilogy with Ruiz if Joshua beats Ruiz? No, I don't think they will. They want to get him out of the way. Unless it's a really, really, really easy win for him. Then I think there could be, yeah. Yes, then I think there could be. But uh, at the moment, no. I don't think. There'll be a trilogy, I think they'll go back to what they had planned before, the route that Eddie Hearn had. Eddie will just say, look, we lost, let's get this out of the way, and we've lost a year, but let's go back to the situation they were in. They'll have all the belts back and they'll have the same power back. So the whole of boxing, I can assure you, will be praying that Joshua doesn't get them belts, because if they do, we're all back to where we were before he fought Ruiz. And Eddie Hearn will be fucking unbearable. Excuse my English, Nicola, if you want to take that out. Eddie Hearn will be unbearable. Let me knock a note with that. 11 minutes. Uh, he'll be unbearable, Eddie Hearn. He just... But... It is what it is, isn't it? It's boxing, isn't it? But like I said... Uh, I don't think they'll uh, want to fight Wilder if they win. But... Uh, and while they're all for, uh, I could go through all that 
I don't think I could go through all that again, back and forth, back and forth. I don't think I could, to be honest. I don't think I could. But uh, like I said, it is what it is, isn't it? It's it's boxing, isn't it? It's the boxing industry. It's uh, it's just how it is. But uh, I don't think I could go through that again at all after the Wilder and Joshua mess back and forward is he taking the 50 mil is he not taking the 50 mil blah de blah I don't want to go through all that now I don't think I could go through all that I mean I've got in, I've got enough going through all that with Fury, Fury Wilder rematch and I think everybody in the boxing industry after Ben Davidson's interview the other day has now saying oh maybe it ain't gonna happen now because Ben Davidson's talking for vet kid I mean would, would Tyson Fury really risk it and fight Povetkin in America. Would they go and do that after all this chit chat? I don't know, but I don't know what to make of it all. To be honest, uh, I think heavyweight boxing at the moment is in a, in, in a bit of a shambles, and the only decent fight out there is Ruiz Joshua, and that's only because Joshua got levered the first time. We all want to know if he can pull it off, but uh, yeah, I suppose you could say Tyson Fury fought Wilder, but he didn't really have anywhere to go, did he? at the time, he couldn't get Pianetta out of the ring, uh, he couldn't get him out of there, and he's cut one of his comeback fights, so in my opinion, Frank Warren thought, do you know what, you ain't going no more Tyson, I'm going to put you in my wild and hope for the best, well, Tyson's hope for the best, did he manage to pull it off, and uh, that's that basically, but let's hope that Tyson does fight Wilder, and he gets that WBC belt, and then he's got the full lot on it. And uh, well, like I said in that other video, you know, it's a poor, poor, poor era. If anybody says it ain't a poor era, well, who are these guys beating? Who, who's Wilder beat? He's beat. He's got two wins of a world champions, Wilder Stevern. and Tyson's got two wins as well. That's it. Joshua's got four wins. And Ruiz has got one win. That's it. Do you know what I mean? What's that? Two forces. That's nine wins of the champions between them. That is it. Nine. Unbelievable. Do you know what I mean? Carl Frotch beat ten world champions plus Darrell. So we're in a poor era. But Fury now has found himself in the big money fight. So I don't see him wanting to risk all that for some fist off for some fist off Wilder that he's had before. Wilder's only cap got to catch you once in 36 minutes. Fury's got to be on his game for the full 36 minutes to win the fight and picking and poking and fainting and you know fumbling about and all that. And Wilder's only got to catch you once. But I also I'm not just going to say it about Tyson. I don't see Wilder wanting to fight Fury either and risk his position at the top table so I don't see the rematch happening anytime soon uh, so Tyson saying it's going to happen in 2020 and all that I don't see it happening anytime soon as why fight a 50-50 fight is that what it is that's what it is isn't it after the last fight being a draw it's a 50-50 fight when they can earn big dough Fighting what's left at division and what's left at division is what? Okay now, I mean look who they're fighting, Tyson's just fought Tommy the Machine Gun, Swartz and now he's fighting fighting Otto, the Truth Wallace. I mean, come on, do you know what I mean? Maybe he might get Chisora another beat in Tyson this year but We've seen that twice, haven't we? And Chisora lost both times. How many trilogies do we see when a guy's lost twice? You know, you don't see a third trilogy, do you? So, who knows, but... Uh, I don't know, but... Uh, Wilder and Otis, do we see that rematch happening? Who wants to see that? Who wants to see that at all? I mean, I don't. Otis is an old man like Povetkin. Vladimir. Attack them. You know, it's heavyweight division at the moment is just controlled by fighters who have got people behind them that are just wanting to abuse fans. I mean, Lucas Brown and David Price. Why are they? Why are they still going? Why are they still? Why are they still in boxing? I mean, if they were horses, they'd have been shot, wouldn't they? They're old men with miles on clock. 
Do you know what I mean? But that's what these sort of people are going to be feasting on, aren't they? Them sort of guys. You know, your David Prices, your Lucas Brown, Povetkins, Tackham's, people like that, Malik Scott's and Jennings's and these people are always going to get livings. You know, you throw Joe Joyce in mix, he's not going to be able to beat them top guys, is he? But throw him in mix as well and there's Yoka to come in there and Dillian White. You know, when they get the, the affairs in order, so... But that's what these, like I said, that's what these are going to feast on and I suppose if they can sell it, I expect the soap opera to continue. So, in my opinion, and please quote me on this, Fury vs Wilder 2 won't happen. Fury Joshua won't happen. Joshua Fury won't happen in 2020. Won't happen at all. That's my opinion and I'm entitled to it. It's 8 o'clock on a Thursday and I'm going to leave the office now. I am shattered. I've been here 11 hours today sorting stuff out. So the effort is going in. So I'm really pleased with how I'm going at the moment. So peace out. Keep on trucking, keep supporting boxing, it's a fantastic sport as I've said before and uh, onwards and upwards, alright? Oh, before I forget, shout out to Climacool, thank you very much for backing the channel.